Hey everyone, Travis here from Travis.media. Today, we're gonna discuss eight ways to stay relevant as a developer. As new technology comes and new ideas get adopted, how do you stay relevant? How do you possess these timeless principles and sharp skills to stay relevant as the years move forward? Well, I have eight ways for you today. I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's get started. Number one, you should always have a hobby project. This is a way for you to keep your skills, to practice. It's a playground to test new coding approaches that you've learned, and it also helps you keep the big picture or learn to keep the big picture in projects. Think about daily things that you can automate or apps that you can build to assist you in your day-to-day -day tasks. For example, maybe you're in school and you need a flashcard app. Sure, there's a bunch of flashcard apps out there, but you have the superpower to build it. And perhaps you're learning some new technology and this could be an opportunity to get better at that by building this app. Maybe you want an app to text you a daily list of items to memorize or something like that. Build it, make it your hobby project so that you can revisit it and make it better every now and then. Action item, start a blog with your favorite framework, CSS or library. Maintain it, create automations around it, write and teach on it, make it your baby. Number two, think conceptually and big picture. Getting stuck in this language, that language thinking can keep you missing the forest for the trees. A conceptual coder knows the fundamentals like loops and functions and classes, etc., and can always come up with a game plan in any language of how to implement some sort of feature to the point where all that's left is just to put the syntax together. Action item, code something in a different language or framework. Put it together all in pseudocode and concepts and then fill in the syntax. See if you can do it. Number three, tried and true usually outweighs the fresh and new, AKA be slow to chase shiny new things. A week or two ago, I had a YouTube comment that was like, Python's on the way out, JS has taken over, and I couldn't help but laugh at that. I mean, Python's like 30 years old, but what does this have to do with flashy things? Well, when a language has been around for 30 years, it's gone through many iterations, it's matured in ways that you need to pay attention to. Developers over the years have evolved in positive ways from this many years of using that language. New things are good, don't get me wrong, but be careful in chasing them blindly, trying to get the edge on other devs. Many of these things won't last. It may sound counterintuitive, but if you want to be relevant, then get good at the programming fundamentals that have stood the test of time, like object-oriented programming, solid principles, and not so much what's always new and trending. For example, in the Travis Media community, we're reading through The Pragmatic Programmer this month. We're doing a chapter a week, and that book's like old, pretty old, but the information is timeless. It's not new and flashy, it's foundational. Action item, make sure you have these fundamentals under your belt, like object-oriented programming, solid principles, MVC, and the like. Number four, keep your career options open. Don't get in a fixed position. Let your career be fluid because your interests will change. And often you don't have any clue that they've changed, so you need to evaluate regularly or periodically what's exciting you and what's becoming a drag. Exciting work will produce enthusiasm. In addition, be looking for new ways to grow or new paths to take within your career. Maybe from developer to developer relations or from front end to back end. Doing so will create a more rounded portfolio over the years and broaden your experience into new and better and more satisfying places. Action item, once a month, evaluate how you're doing. If you're still enthusiastic about your specific job or if there's something else that's become your interest over a period of time. And if so, what steps then should you take to explore what else might be out there for you? Do that once a month. Number five, remember that coding is only half the job. You wanna remain relevant? Well, remember that coding is only half the job. Don't spend all your time getting better at coding and not developing the other skills that are important as a developer, like communication, leadership, and decision-making. These skills come by reading non-coding books and other things like watching videos, listening to podcasts, etc. And yes, read the coding books, take the Udemy courses, make sure you learn the material, but every now and then flip through a productivity book or a better communications book or a marketing book and help yourself stay balanced between the coding tasks and the non-coding tasks. Action item, download a book on productivity or better communication, sales, organization, and read it. Do this like once every other month. 
at least. Number six, as years of experience increase, so should your leadership skills. Now, new developers, they're hanging on for dear life. They want to get their commit made. They want to get their feature completed. They are stressed. That's fine. But as you mature and can code better, you're going to be needed on the front lines, in the meetings, in the decision making, in the discussions with customers and stakeholders. Be sure then that you're learning about leadership and leadership principles. Start calling shots. Start making decisions. Start delegating tasks to some of the younger devs. Start speaking up more on calls and meetings. Start mentoring. This will pay off for them, but even more for you as you develop your character into that senior developer in fellow team member position. Action item, find some newbies to help. Offer some helpful advice and tips that you've learned over the years. You can review their code, give them feedback, and be sure to speak up in meetings. Your voice and experience are valuable. Look for more opportunities to be a leader. Number seven, stay interested or make adjustments regularly to keep the passion. Okay, this is important. We're seeing more and more people getting burned out, more and more developers getting burned out, and they lose the passion. And this happens really for two reasons. First, the obvious, you're just not taking vacations when you need to be taking vacations. You need this, your company needs to push this, and you need to clear out for like a week, maybe two weeks, completely, regularly. And then second, it's just because you're doing the same work day in and day out. You're glad to be making the money, you're glad you have a job, but you're getting sick of doing the same stuff every day. But remember, you already have a job, you're not really strapped to the chair financially, so periodically shop around. Look at new positions and take on roles that are new interests of yours. Action item, Take a week off soon. You need it. Recharge and do no coding at that time. Also, take note of what other positions are out there to get you out of the monotony you may find yourself in. It will do you well. And number eight, read development books, listen to podcasts, and watch videos. We've talked about the other side of coding. Now we need to come back to the coding side. And to stay relevant, always be learning. Read tech news, read books. Listen to podcasts. Be sure you're feeding yourself industry-wide news and tips to keep you relevant. And this doesn't have to be every day. Maybe just once or twice a week, read something. Maybe read a book over the next month. Or maybe listen to one new tech podcast this week. Or maybe get a packed publishing subscription and see what new technology you can learn from their massive database of material. Action. Ask for a tech book recommendation on Twitter. Just get on there and say, hey, what tech book do you guys recommend? I want to read one this month. People love giving book recommendations. And then once you get it, take this month to read the book. Try to read one book a month. And use Twitter and LinkedIn to keep up with the latest things going on in tech. And you don't have to go overboard with this and stress yourself out. Just periodically read and watch things to keep growing. And that's number eight. That's all I got today. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video.